Today's topic is on periodontal abscess. Learning outcomes are analyze the proposed 2017 classification of periodontal abscess, discuss the pathophysiology of periodontal abscess, differentiate between the clinical features of periodontal abscess and periapical abscess, probe into the various treatment techniques for treating periodontal abscess, discuss periodontal abscess in non periodontitis patient. So, periodontal abscess is classified under the uh, periodontitis and other conditions affecting the periodontium according to 2017 classification as the other conditions can be the cause for periodontal abscess so it is included under uh, other conditions affecting the periodontium in 2017 classification. Coming to the definition what is a periodontal abscess? It is a localized perineal inflammation in the periodontal tissues. In more details we can tell that it is a localized collection of pus communicating with the oral cavity through the gingival sulcus or other, den or, or other periodontal sites and not arising from the tooth pulp. It is also known as lateral abscess or parietal abscess as it is situated in the lateral aspect of the root. So it has been classified according to various conditions like according to location it has been classified into two that is first one is abscess in the supporting periodontal tissues along the lateral aspect of the root with this condition, a sinus generally occurs in the bone that extends laterally from the abscess to the external surface. Second one, when the abscess is in the soft tissue wall of a deep periodontal pocket. So according to the location, it has been classified into two. Coming to the onset or cause of lesion, it can be acute periodontal abscess or chronic periodontal abscess that is associated with chronic periodontitis or periodontal abscesses occurring in systemically compromised patients commonly can be seen in diabetes patients. According to the number of abscesses, it has been classified into single and multiple. Single due to local factors that contribute to the closure of pocket. So it mainly it, can, it will be accompanied with a single abscess or one site abscess whereas multiple it is mostly reported in diabetes mellitus patients and medically compromised patients. So in that you will be seeing multiple number of abscesses. You can see in this picture that this patient is having several number of abscesses. Coming to the etiology, either it can be due to periodontitis, that is periodontitis related abscess or to sites without prior existence of periodontitis, that is non-periodontitis related abscesses. So coming to the periodontitis related abscess, the reasons can be due to tortuous pockets with a root morphological peculiarities. As you can see that it is tortuous pocket, that is it is a complex pocket uh, due to the root morpho morphological peculiarities, the opening will be very minimal. So it can lead to the abscess formation. The second one is marginal closure of pocket which leads to an extension in the surrounding tissues. So this inflammation can lead to the surrounding tissues due to the pressure of separation inside the closed pocket. That can be the next reason and uh, which occurs at different stages also that is as an exacerbation of an untreated periodontitis, refractory periodontitis or during periodontal maintenance also for the due to the improper removal of local factors or due to the uh, increased inflammatory uh, process which can lead to uh, the abscess formation and also it can be lead to uh, fibrin secretion as a part of healing which leads to localized accumulation of pus which may favor the closure of gingival margin to the tooth surface so this more uh, amount of fibrin production can lead to the closure of the gingival margin so which lead to the localized accumulation of pus so then there will be changes in the composition of microflora from gram positive to gram negative uh, anaerobes. So bacterial virulence or in host defenses could also make the pocket lumen insufficient to drain. And also treatment with systemic antibiotics without subjugable debridement also one of the reasons. Then incomplete removal of calculus or inadequate scaling and might get dislodged into the soft tissues. So these are the reasons, some of the reasons for periodontitis related. So coming to the term periodontitis related abscess can be various reasons for the cause of non periodontitis related abscess. First one is the impaction of foreign bodies. So it can be either flows, brush or fish bone. So which leads to gingival abscess or oral, oral hygiene abscesses and also lateral perforation which happens due to the endodontic therapy or root canal like root, root canal treatments 
which traumatizes the periodontium and which leads to non periodontitis leaf capsis and also like local factors affecting the morphology of roots such as seminal tears external root desorption so that can be also one of the reasons for non periodontitis related abscess other causes can be diabetes usually multiple abscesses are seen or any forcing of calculus in the tissue during instrumentation then prolonged systemic antibiotic therapy for uh, the non oral causes then trauma from occlusion so what are the symptoms for this periodontal abscess so definitely pain will be there which will be more severe in case of parietal abscesses compared to the other areas and avoid swelling on the gums sometimes extending into the alveolar mucosa the other symptom and pain while biting may be absent but persistent charge or bleeding can be seen itching sensation in the gums and tooth feels high on biting coming to the uh, signs so avoid swelling in the gingiva along the lateral surface of the root involving the marginal and attached gingiva so the gingiva usually appears inflamed with this avoid swelling tenderness on perforation present tenderness on lateral percussion not very prominent tooth mobility is evident periodontal pocket will be present first discharge through the pocket or through a sinus if present uh, then presence of subgingival calculus coming to the formation periodontal abscess formation may occur in the following ways first one that is the lateral extension of in inflammation from the inner surface of the periodontal pocket into the connective tissue of the pocket wall the formation of abscess results when the drainage into pocket spaces in there so when the in inflammation if it spreads from pocket to the connective tissue if it is not drained properly through the pocket then the resultant abscess will get formed the next one is that the extension of inflammation from the periodontal pocket deep into the supporting periodontal tissues and the localization of the support, separative inflammatory process along the lateral aspect of the root so if it is accumulated along the lateral aspect of the root it forms periodontal abscess then the other cause is that uh, cause is that that is the formation in a pocket with a tortuous course around the root so if it is a complex type of pocket so the drainage won't be that much proper so in that case a periodontal abscess may form in the calvi sac so it will get trapped inside the deep end of which is shut off from the surface then the other uh, way of formation is that incomplete removal of calculus during treatment of a periodontal pocket so then gingival wall gets shrinks after the uh, initial scaling so thereby occluding the periodontal uh, pocket orifice so what happens this periodontal abscess occurs in the sealed off portion of the pocket that is the other reason way of formation the say, last one is that after trauma to the tooth or with perforation the lateral root in case of endodontic therapy that is usually with the non periodontal disease related abscess so in these situation, situations a periodontal abscess may occur in the absence of periodontal abscess sorry periodontal disease coming to the pathogenesis microscopically uh, abscess is a localized accumulation of viable and non viable tmns within the periodontal pocket wall so when there is inflammatory component there will be more amount of pmns so when there is more amount of pmns which they will liberate enzymes so that have has the ability to digest the cells and other tissue structures so thereby which will form the liquid product known as pus so which constitutes the center of the abscess so an inflammatory uh, acute inflammatory reaction surrounds the pollen area and the overlying epithelium exhibits intracellular and extracellular edema and the invasion of leukocytes so the localized acute abscess becomes a chronic abscess when this pollen content drains through a fistula into the outer gingival surface or into the periodontal pocket so the bacterial invasion of tissues has been reported in abscesses the invading organisms were identified as gram negative cocci diplococci fusiforms and spirochetes and also invasive fungi were also found so it has been interpreted as being opportunistic in opportunistic invaders so microorganisms that colonize the periodontal abscess have been reported to be primarily gram negative and anaerobic rods so coming to the differential diagnosis so various abscesses are there periapical abscess gingival abscess periodontal abscess and pericoronal abscess 
periapical abscess it forms at the root apex uh, and gingival abscess it forms in the space between the gingiva and tooth and peritoneal abscess it forms in a peritoneal pocket and pericoronal abscess it forms around impacted or partially erupted tooth so peritoneal abscess uh, how it is different from periapical abscess so peritoneal abscess you can see that the dull constant uh, less severe uh, and it is localized and patient usually can locate the opening tooth whereas periapical abscess this pain is very severe throbbing and lasts for long uh, deep unable to locate the opening tooth and it will be more severe than the peritoneal abscess uh, periodontal abscess, the radiographic uh, feature is that radio, lateral radiolucency can be seen, whereas periapical abscess it is apical radiolucency. And periodontal abscess, it is more associated with pre existing periodontal pockets. Uh, caries can be, or both can be, it is not associated with caries, it is more with the periodontal, uh, periodontitis, so periodontal pockets and caries. Okay. And periapical abscess, it is associated only with the deep restoration, caries or tooth wear. Peritoneal abscess, the pulp test will be vital. Periapical abscess, non-vital. Peritoneal abscess, the swelling generalized and localized involved, around the involved tooth and gingival margin, seldom with a fistulous tract, whereas periapical abscess, swelling or localized often with fistulous tract opening in the apical area. So coming to the uh, gingival abscess, so peritoneal abscess it, which involves the supporting peritoneal structure whereas gingival abscess is only confined to the marginal and interdental gingiva. So which often uh, peritoneal abscess of, often occurs in the course of per, chronic destructive peritonditis whereas gingival abscess occurs in previously disease free areas. Peritoneal abscess, X-ray bone lows present, so that is bone lows can be seen, whereas gingival abscess, this bone lows cannot be seen because acute inflammatory response due to the uh, forcing or embedding of the foreign material into the gingiva. So peritoneal abscess, pocket present, gingival abscess, no pockets. So coming to the diagnosis, so how we can diagnose the abscess, whether it's peritoneal periapical, gingival or pericoronal. So more, more than that, in peritoneal abscess, the radiolucency will be along the lateral aspect of the root. And usually you can see the vertical type of bone loads and this radiograph is required to rule out any periapical involvement. If there can be periapical involvement also in case of peritonditis case. The source of infection may be tracked by inserting a GP point. You can see that clinically you can insert a GP point to track the source of infection up to the base of the pocket or through the sinus present. You can see after that you can take a radiograph and you can say point out the uh, abscess area. So coming to the management, it has been classified into initial phase and definitive phase. So this will come under the emergency phase, the peritoneal abscess. So first thing due to the acute symptoms. So in initial phase, we have to reduce the acute symptoms and definitive phase. And after the, after this acute symptoms get subsided, we will go to the advanced treatment of uh, peritonitis. So coming to the initial phase that comes with drainage of the abscess. Any abscess, if there is a drainage, is the first initial phase for removing the acute symptoms. Establish drainage preferably through the pocket if it is draining through the pocket. In case of large abscesses if it is not getting drained through the pocket then external incision drainage might be required. So that is buttonhole approach that is incision and drainage. So that is the open approach. So when it is draining through the pocket it is closed approach and if it is draining through the uh, by incision then it is called open approach. So that is the intra pocket drainage uh, closed approach. Pocket wall distended by a peritoneal probe or the thin tip of an ultrasonic scaler which helps in evacuation of pus. So which remove deposits on the root surface by scaling and root planning. So followed by curettage of the uh, uh, pocket wall. Then sequential irrigation with saline and chlorhexidine or butyrin. Then you have to grind up the tooth to reduce the occlusal contact. So this is based on the intra-pocket drainage, closed approach. 
So any pulpit, any secondary pulpit involvement should be ruled out at the first visit itself. So in peritoneal abscesses with periapical involvement, drainage through root canal can also be done. So after the treatment and coming to the follow-up uh, medications and the patient instructions, so analgesis can be uh, prescribed. Antibiotics uh, is clearly indicated for medically compromised patients and example diabetes. Abscesses with systemic uh, manifestations that is tender lymph node P, fever etc. So whenever antibiotics are prescribed, it is better to do the abscess drainage during the course. And uh, okay, under patient instructions, warm saline rinses can be given every, every hour. Follow up uh, 24 to 48 hours to moni monitor the response. If no improvement is seen, you can suspect of enterotic involvement also. Review after one week for definitive treatment. In any case, antibodies should not be used as a sole treatment. Remember, antibodies can only suppress the signs of periodontal diseases. They can never cure. Coming to the definitive treatment, once acute symptoms have subsided, so the underlying periodontal problem should be treated as soon as possible to prevent the recurrence. So otherwise, if the underlying periodontal problem is not getting treated, again the uh, periodontal abscess can occur. So multiple episodes of periodontal abscess which results in rapid bone loss, gingiva recession, pathology migration, endrontic involvement and ultimately tooth loss. So on a positive side, surgical treatment of acutely abscessed areas generally show more favorable results. Also, the occurrence of an abscess is a big uh, motivation for the patient to undergo treatment. So, an abscess tooth may be indicated for extraction if it is excessively mobile, that is weakly mobile with questionable prognosis. So, mobility should only be evaluated only the, after the acute stage has subsided. Uh, if there is any history of multiple periodontal abscess in relation to the same tooth, then it is indicated for extraction. Then if the uh, endronic treatment is not possible with that uh, tooth, then it has to be extracted, then poor restorability. As we conclude, the periodontal abscess is the third most frequent dental emergency. The periodontal abscess is a frequent periodontal condition in which periodontal tissues may be rapidly destroyed. Its importance is based on the possible need of urgent care, the affection, affectation of tooth prognosis and the possibility of infection spreading. So thank you for now.